Today, let's find out what this contraption and this mountain have in common on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Our story involves two brothers, William and James Horlick. James was born in 1844 and William was born in 1846 in England. Their dad was a saddle maker and before long, William was apprenticing to become a saddler. Meanwhile, James was being trained as a chemist slash pharmacist. James began working for the Mellon Food Company in London, which produced a powdered baby food from malt and bran. James was curious if he could come up with his own baby food product. Their dad was also involved in brewing, so he had a little malting experience. In the 1870s, James, William, and their dad experimented in this actual granary where they were mixing fresh milk with wort, which is a liquid extracted from malted barley and wheat during the brewing process. Now, their dad's first cousin was named Joseph Horlick. He was a blacksmith and a wagon maker and had immigrated to Racine, Wisconsin in 1844 later branching out in lime and stone business, farming, milling, and ice supply. And by the way, he had become quite wealthy. 25 years after he emigrated to America, Joseph took a trip back to England in 1869, and he ended up persuading the now 24-year-old William Horlick to return to America with him. William lived with Joseph and ended up falling in love with Joseph's daughter, which was his second cousin, named Arabella. They married in 1870, and then they went back to England, where William continued to saddle for a living. Two years later, they came back to America, and William worked with his father-in-law in the lime and stone business. The following year, William's brother James, with his new wife and baby, decided to come to America in 1873. All this time, James had still been working at Mellon's. So that same year, the brothers started their own company to make their own malted milk drink. They patented Horlick's Infant and Invalid's Food in 1883. Horlick's Malted Milk Company was originally named J&W Horlick Company in 1873. James, William, and their wives, Margaret and Arabella, were the original stockholders. The company specialized in producing malted milk as a nutritional supplement in a variety of forms. More about that later. James was the president and William took on the role of vice president and treasurer. As time went on, William's two sons were also involved in the business as vice president and treasurer. The company eventually became a leader in Racine, Wisconsin's food industry. The milk used in production needed to be of high quality so that the end product would be safe for consumers. During this time, milk standards were loose and milk-borne illnesses were common. So the company established high quality standards for the milk and also designed special steel containers to preserve their product. Other cities and companies across the country soon adopted Horlick's milk standards. The way it was processed was the milk mixture was heated very slowly to the point where all the water evaporated and then it was reduced to granules which could then be reconstituted by adding water, much the same way that our baby formula today works. It would keep indefinitely in that form which made it very portable and very easy to keep in your cupboard for a long time. Here's some being bottled for shipment. In 1889, James and his family moved to New York and opened a branch there. The following year, James returned to England to establish a branch there, while William would stay behind to manage the original company in Racine, Wisconsin. By 1905, Racine had three factories built, barely keeping up with the demand. By 1906, the UK demand was large enough that James Horlick bought a site in Slough and the building was operational in 1908. Once it started, the English operation was actually surpassing the Racine production, which is amazing. In England, Horlick's had two main competitors, his old job, Mellon's, and Nestle's. James learned from Mellon that the marketing was just as important as the product itself. 
So Horlick would send free samples with a booklet telling new mothers that his formula was better for their babies than breast milk. Horlicks was also among the pioneers of commercial radio advertising. In the 1930s, the company was spending more than one-third of its advertising money on radio advertising. Speaking of advertising, this mechanical hand drink mixer measures about nine and a half inches. The square center part says Horlicks. You hold it with your fingers. And what you do is you have the drink mix in the glass of milk. You put the mixer in the glass. You hold the top of the handle with your other hand and you move the center square piece up and down. This spins the bottom part and it mixes the drink. According to legend, William Horlick approached Hamilton Beach Manufacturing Company of Racine, who were developing motor-operated appliances for the home, not just for commercial use. And he urged them to apply their lightweight, high-speed motor to the increasing popular task of mixing malts. The result was the first electric drink mixer, patented in 1911. This one has a Horlick malted milk mixing cup. William served as the company's treasurer until his brother's death in 1921, at which time he became the president, holding that position until his death in 1936. Since his sons were helping to run the company, I imagine that they took over after William's death. Doesn't really say anywhere who took over. When William died at his Racine, Wisconsin home in 1936, he was 90 years old and he left a $17 million estate, which would be about $287 million today. I wonder if any of his descendants are actually still living off that money today. Wouldn't that be interesting? William gave the Racine community substantial gifts, such as Memorial Hall, a maternity wing at St. Luke's Hospital in memory of his daughter Alice, Island Park, Horlick Athletic Field, and the land for the high school named in his honor, William Horlick High School. You can still go to all of these places today. In 1919, William sponsored a football team called the Horlick Racine Legion. He contributed substantial sums of money to convert Horlick Athletic Field to accommodate professional football. William also financially supported a few expeditions to the Antarctic and the North Pole. The explorers also took the malted milk with them, which provided them with non-perishable nutrition. Because of his contributions, this mountain in Antarctica is named after William Horlick. Over in England, James Horlick was knighted in 1914 and raced to the baronet of Cowley Manor. When he died in 1921, his title was inherited by his eldest son, Ernest Horlick. His second son, James, became the fourth baronet in 1958. His third son, Gerald, was actually injured in World War I and he died in 1918. During World War I, Horlick's nutritional drink was popular both at home and in the war effort. Every army around the world used it. In 1945, the Horlicks plant in England bought out the American plant. The Horlicks factory today is described as perhaps the most beautiful historical industrial building still standing in Slough. In 1969, the Horlicks Corporation was purchased for $60 million by Beecham Group of England. At that time, the England factory was producing 30 million pounds of powder each year. Horlicks is now owned by GlaxoSmithKline. In 1975, after nearly 90 years of operation, the Racine plant was shut down by GlaxoSmithKline. Today, the Horlick factory still stands. A company was recently utilizing a part of the building to manufacture snowblowers, but they're no longer in business. And I'm not sure if any part of the building is being used today. The largest markets for Horlicks today are the UK, India, and Malaysia. People use it in the powder form and they use it as a sleep aid. My bottle is a manganese glass screw top jar. Manganese glass was used between the 1880s until about the end of World War I, so by 1920 you don't really see it anymore. 
since it has Racine and London on the jar, and the London location wasn't running until 1908, this dates this bottle somewhere between 1908 and 1920. Manganese glass turns a purpley color after being exposed to the sun for long periods of time. And that's all I've got for today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.